Also, if you have any repair points, please let us know in the comments. Now, with your brief, with the please, by your head, close your eyes. For a brief prayer. Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning. Lord, we thank you for just allowing us to open our eyes this morning, Lord. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to, allowing us to get here safe and sound. And Lord, we just ask that the word that you have for us today just sprouts up in us and just blooms like it's about to be springtime. In your heavenly name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to wear shirts. <laughs>
praise forever and always, God, because you deserve that from us. So we just ask that you continue to worship with us.
Okay. Uh, that is why Jesus' ministry started not at a palace. It started in the wilderness. The, the Bible says that in Matthew that the Spirit led him into the wilderness because we have to ask ourselves, what do our friends say about who we think we are? Amen. Because who you are and who you associate with is directly connected to what you desire. What do your friends say about what you think you can accomplish? What do your friends say about what you want out of life? And so after Jesus affirms, after God affirms Jesus in his baptism, he sends him into the wilderness so that he can find out, I know I'm your father, but am I your friend? Because here's the thing, we can't separate Jesus' divinity from his humanity. So even though he was God and God alone, he was still human. So I need to know. Can I trust you Hallelujah. to be my friend? Hmm. When the devil approaches you and says, if you are who you say you are, Hallelujah. Yeah. use your spiritual hmm. nature to turn stones into bread. If, if you are who you say you are, why don't you throw yourself off? Because God won't let you. Yeah, right. Won't let you go. If you are who you yeah. say you are. Matter of fact, I know why you came. You came for all the kingdoms. You came to save the people. Here it is. I'll give you the people without the cross. Right, right, right. Come on now. Uh-oh. In other words, sometimes you can identify what you want out of life by who tries to give you what you want without your cross. Oh, ouch. Amen. Are there people around you who try to give you things not the way God intended for it to be? So Jesus' struggle with temptation wasn't just, am I who God said I am? Right. Can I be friendly enough not to take the easy way out? Amen. And there are some of us who have people around us who, who want you to take the easy way out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. They want you to have stuff the easy way, not God's way, but the, the easy way, the way that, that doesn't come with problems or, right. or strife or, or anguish right. or loss or, or pain. It's an easier way. And that's why when we look at the text, James says that that's why you quarrel, that's, that's why you fight, because not only do you not know who you are, you really don't know what you, what you want. Amen. Amen. Because don't those desires come from the battle within you? You desire, but you don't have, so you kill. Mm. You covet, but you can't do what you want, so you quarrel and you fight. There's a scripture that says there's a friend that sticks closer mm. than a brother. And, and this, this, this scripture is interesting because we, we, we all know the, the, the story of the prodigal son. And the son that goes off and, and spends all his wealth and is, is living in a big side. He says, you know what? There are servants in my father's house that live better Amen. than Amen. I do right now. So I'll, I'll go home because I'm tired of living like a pig. Amen. He says his daddy sees him from afar off and, and welcomes him home. And they throw him a party and he gets a robe and he gets a ring. But what he also gets is a hater in the form of a brother. Yeah. 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 The Bible says that at that same party, his brother goes to the dad and says, You never threw me a party like this. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. Instead of being happy that his brother was back, he was mad that he never got the party that his brother's getting yeah. right now. Oh my goodness. Could be <laughs> that it's hard for us to deal with family that's not friends it's because everybody who's your family is not supposed to be a part of your future. Amen. 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 Just because you share my last name doesn't mean that you're supposed to share mine. Amen. And it's hard because the Bible says that there's a, a, a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Well, what do you do when you want your brother to stick close to? And we struggle and we hold on to relationships because I, I want you to be here with me. I want
the relationship with David and Jonathan. David gets into the palace because he kills Goliath and says that he develops a, a covenant bond with Jonathan. Here it is. Jonathan is the heir to the throne. Jonathan loves David so much, he gives him his armor, which is symbolic of saying, I know you're going to be king. Amen. Which means, I know my daddy is the king, but there's something about you Hallelujah. that lets me know that I need to stay in covenant with you, so I'm going to give you what I'm supposed to rightly yeah. have. Because when you hear this, when you have a real friend that will sacrifice the throne, mm -hmm. they'll sacrifice power, yeah. they'll sacrifice position, right. because when you have a real friend, your presence was more than their presence. When you have a real friend, your, your presence is, is better than promises. When you have a real friend, your presence is better than provision. When you have a real friend, your presence is better than a privilege. When you have a real friend, their presence is better than promotion. And some of us start with family when God wants to replace them with a, a real friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, what, what do you do when you got too much family in your circle and not enough? Mm. Friends. Mm. So I was just looking, just looking at the text. And it, it, James gives us hard words. He, he, he says, you, you, you're in the position that you're in right now. It is not just because you're fighting around you, but you're fighting within you. Because there's something internally wrong, not just with who you are, yes. but with what you want. So then the question that I, I have to ask is, what is it that I really, what is it that I really want? Hmm. And what do I want that God needs to remove? Amen. Uh, Amen. Yeah. My, my daughter is at the age where they send projects home uh, that the parents have to do. I really don't need that in school. <laughs> I already did school, don't give me the prize. Because my daughter is saying, and here's the thing, my daughter is saying, so she wants to do it. But it'd be stuff where you got to cut shapes out and stuff. I don't trust my daughter with scissors. And you know the little round scissors, they don't really cut the way that you need them to, so of course they're going to go get the scissors that's six inches long. I want to use these scissors, baby. I don't have time for that. So I end up having to do the project. So we do it together, but really, I need it. Y'all got the same project that y'all have <laughs> So we're doing a project and we, we're having to cut out these shapes and glue them on construction paper. Again, weird because we could have just left the shapes where they was. They still going to be the same shape. Amen. But I cut it out. And my daughter, as critical as she is, she says, Daddy, um, you didn't cut good enough <laughs> right. on the dotted line. Right. I said, um, well, I, I cut the shape out as the instructions said. Again, I already did school, so I really don't care if you can see the dotted line. She said, well, Daddy, I don't want the dotted line a part of the shape, so now I have to cut a little bit more off. Well, what, what, are, you, what are you trying to say? Um, it's not if you get cut that determines if you're a friend of God. It's when and where you get yeah. cut that determines if you're a friend of God. And I prove it. Um, in John 15, Jesus says, I am the true vine. My father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it can be more fruitful. Many of us spend our lives trying not to get cut. But I want to be a friend of God, and I, I want to bear fruit. And we missed the part uh, that says that when you bear fruit, that's when He prunes you, yeah. which means to cut. And some of us mistake the pain for punishment, mm. and so you begin to question your position because why would God cut me if He cares about me? Why would God cut me if He loves me? Why would God cut me if I'm actually starting to bear fruit? And so you mistake the cut for punishment, and you miss the fact that He's trying. Watch this, because if you read it on the surface, cut and prune mm -hmm. look like they should mean the same thing. Right. How many of you know that the same words can have different meanings when they have different intentions? Right. Right. Yeah. 
One cut is because you died. The other cut is so you won't die. Right. Right. Okay, see, so I understand that we're living in 2024, so some of you have never actually cut an actual grapevine, so you gotta understand. So I was talking to a gardener, and the gardener said that most people miss the power and potency of what Jesus was saying when he said, I'm the vine and you're the branches. Amen. Here's what he told me. He said, branches will continue to grow out horizontally, infinitely. Right. Because they want to grow. And so they grow out and it'll look like they're flourishing. It'll look like they're doing well and you'll see leaves sprouting up. And they'll look good and they're growing. They're, they're growing because they want to grow. They grow so much that little side branches will start to grow and connect with them. And so now you got extra branches, you got leaves, and it's good. Um, but it's not producing fruit. And, uh, it's not producing fruit, and then all those leaves and those side branches that are now connected are starting to pull energy right. and nutrients off of the main branch. Amen. Amen. Here it is. Don't miss it. The problem is in the wintertime when seasons change, those leaves fall. Mm -hmm. And now you have outgrown mm -hmm. your roots. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm. How, how do I make this make sense? Uh, in other words, the branch, because it was growing, trying to do its own thing, it grew itself to death. Right. Oh. <laughs> mm. So you're telling me that I can be growing and killing myself at the same time? Yes, because if you're not careful and you're not cut at the right time, you can develop side branches and leaves, and all they want to do is pull from you because they want to be connected to the main. Mm. Okay. 
In other words, the goal of friction isn't what is produced. The goal of friction is what is perceived. Okay. Okay. Uh, another way, make it make sense. Um, as a kid, um, I, I would ask my parents questions. And um, they would give me an answer. And as a, an inquisitive young lad, I would often say, well, why? This is a different time now. This is a, a there's a term that they've given it called gentle parenting. Um, I don't follow nor subscribe to gentle parenting because I don't have gentle kids. I know that's why. If I have gentle kids, maybe I can be a gentle parent. And I don't have experience with being a gentle parent. My parents, when they heard those questions of why, the answer was. Y'all lived with me, I didn't know it. Y'all was in my house. Or we had same parent. The answer was always because I said so. In other words, I don't owe you an explanation. It is what it is because I said so. <laughs> I didn't know you were talking different like that. Yeah. But here, here's the interesting thing. As I've gotten older, and I am now in my mid-thirties firmly. <laughs> Got my own kids and my own family. When my, my parents talk to me, and they ask me stuff, if I ask them why, they may take the time to say, well, well this is, this is why. And it's, and it's interesting because the, the, the same ones they said, because I said so in one season, now we, we have a conversation. It's a little cool when you, you get to that place and you can have conversations now, not commands. The older we get, the nature of the relationship grew. Because I can be trusted with an explanation. As a kid, not only do I not owe you an explanation, I don't necessarily trust you with an explanation. Because you have no experience. You haven't been through anything. So why am I explaining something to you that you don't even have the, the, the mental capacity to understand? But now, I can be trusted with an explanation. Here it is because just because you get older doesn't mean you get closer. Well. Another way, okay. Um, God says in Isaiah 29, these people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules that they've been taught. Jesus backdoored this in the I'm not saying many will say to me on that day, did we not prophesy in your name and drive out demons and perform all kinds of miracles? And I will tell them plainly, depart from me. I never Amen. knew you. In, in other words, just because I've known you all my life doesn't mean I can trust you with my life. Mm. I know it's going to get tough. Uh, just because we come from the same area doesn't mean we have the same anointing. Just because you have my last name doesn't mean I have to give you unlimited access to my first name. Well, and just because we have spent time doesn't mean that you've made an investment. Amen. Okay. Uh, Jesus said, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Could it be that Jesus came to die for his friends and not his followers? Mm. That's just what the, the Bible says. Great, greater love has no one than to lay down one's life for one's friends, which means in order for me to be a friend, I gotta choose to stop being a father. Mm. Oh, mm. Right. hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Okay, I'm just gonna go back to the Bible because that's the easiest thing to do when things get tight. Uh, he then says, I no longer call you servants or slaves because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. And in other words, the friendship wasn't about what was going to be produced. It was about what was now perceived. You're my friend.
just telling you what the Bible says. He says, I no longer call you slaves. I now call you friends. Because that means at one point, we were slaves. Here it is. The Bible says that too. Slaves to righteousness. Paul tells us in Romans, what then? Shall we sin because we are no longer under the law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourself to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves to the one you obey. Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You are set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. Hallelujah. So becoming a slave is part of the process. Mm -hmm. But some of us, not all of us, but some of us have made it a permanent position. <laughs> Could it be that some of us can't become a friend with God because you got comfortable being a slave to righteousness? You come in here and do the same thing week in and week out. You sing the songs. You offer your tithes, you raise your hands, you stomp your feet, and then you leave back out the same way that you came in because you only did what you were told to do like a good slave does. Because that's the same is my definition. Somebody that does what they are told without any question of explanation. And there are some people who are sitting in the pews and they never look to friendship because you got comfortable being a slave. You should have did this in Black History Month. Some of us got comfortable in chains of righteousness that God
came home and my son's room was clean. Here it is, it's clean when the bed is made. That's another level of clean. When they go the extra step, it made it a bed. So his bed was made, Boogie's bed was made, shoes was put up, the back, the bathroom was clean, and the trash in the bathroom was taken out. So now I'm hyped. Because I had to tell you. But then they both came in and said, um, did you see the bedrooms and the bathroom? I said, yeah, I saw it. I saw it. Oh, uh, what do you think? It, it looks like how I expected it to look. Right. Well, but because we cleaned up without you having to, to ask us, can we go to Nana's house? Here it is. It's not that I didn't like their actions. But their actions were driven by motive. Not to please daddy, but to get something from daddy. And in other words, I don't want to be daddy's friend. I just want daddy to be my finance. Could it be that some of us, not all of us, only do for God when we think God can do for us. When it's time for promotion, when you're ready to get a new man, when the wife you got is getting on your nerves, when, when you need that scholarship, that's the only time when you, you're coming to church faithfully and you gave your tithes and you praying for folks and you ain't cussing people out. God, don't you see what I, they got a nugget for? I mean, uh, one week, two weeks, three weeks. Abraham says, and then the Lord says, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm doing? Mm. A 
Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all the nations on earth will be blessed through him. Right? Hallelujah. He chosen him Hallelujah. so that he will direct his children Hallelujah. and his household after him, and they will do what is right and just, so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Yes. Yes. Then the Lord said, "The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah mm. is so great, mm. and their sin so grievous mm. that I will go down." And see what they have done. Mm. Oh my goodness. Here it is. Uh, Abraham proceeds to interject and intercede and negotiate right. with God Hallelujah. on behalf of yeah. Sodom yes, and Gomorrah. Yes, he says, Will you sweep away yes. the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people okay. in the city? Will you really sweep away and not spare the place for the sake? Of 50 righteous people, will the judge of all the earth not do what is right? Abraham, who are you talking to? Right. Right. Amen. Amen. If I heard that, come on, brother Abraham. I'm wondering how do you still have breath right now? Hallelujah. Talking to God, saying, if you are a good judge, uh -huh. Hallelujah. will you kill righteous people? Yes. But God says, but because it's you, for 50 people, I'll spare the city. And so Abraham, he says, the Bible says, because I've been so bold to speak once, let me speak again. What about 45? And this man turned into an option there, 45, 45, 35, 35, 25, 25, 20, 10. God, what about 10? Will you spare? If you can just find 10 people in the city mm. that are still righteous. Hallelujah. And God said, for you. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. You. Praise because you. it is you. Praise the Lord. If I find 10, mm. right. I'll spare the city. Yes. It is friendship yes. with God. Was that God cared not just about Abraham's word. But he cared about Abraham's will. Hallelujah. Here's the tension. Because I can hear you saying, but doesn't God want my will to be aligned with his will? Yes. And the answer is yes. And he still wants you to have a will. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm done. But I want to I close it with this. Uh, Moses built a tabernacle mm -hmm. in the Old Testament. And the tabernacle that he got was built with God's dimensions right. and God's specifications. Right. In fact, it was so grandiose that it took three chapters to get all the dimensions right. of what this tabernacle was going to look. It was designed down to what the priests yeah. were going to wear Amen. on their robes. Yeah. It had three separate areas of worship. Mm -hmm. And all of this was done because God is holy. And that word holy means Hallelujah. set apart. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because our sin can't approach God's holiness. So it had to have three separate areas of worship. The outer court yes. that everybody could get to. The holy place where you had to be cleansed. And in the holy of holies that only the high priest could enter yes. once a year. And if he was not right with God, they would tie a rope around him because they weren't going in there with him. And they knew that if the bells that was on the bottom of his robe stopped jingling, and that he went in wrong and died, and they would say, oh, let's pull him up out of here because he should have gone in there wrong in the first place. They was not going in there. Here it is because they couldn't. And this was God's design. Because I am holy and you are not. Uh, but David, some years later, said, uh, but I am a friend with benefits. And so David had his own idea for a tabernacle. It's in the text. In 2 Samuel 6, we see a man that gets killed from touching the ark of God that's supposed to sit in the Holy of Holies. He touched it. God got mad. Killed the man. David saw it and said, uh, whoa. Then proceeded to set up a tent, Amen. put the ark of God inside the tent, and then went in himself Amen. and worshiped. Amen. He ain't having no 
outer court. He ain't have no holy place. He didn't have no holy of holies. And this is the same part of the Bible where it says that David danced his clothes off. And people got mad and asked him, how are you going to be so disrespectful to God? And David said, I'll be more disrespectful than this because of who God is to me. And so I was asking God, how is it that you had a tabernacle with two dimensions set up for Moses, but David could take that same ark of the covenant and put it in a single tent? Walk in and worship and bless your name and walk out. Hallelujah. Unharmed. What? Hallelujah. What should have killed him? God comes out. Yes. Yes. Because they said, I don't want to just be holy. I want to know your heart. Yes. They said, I don't want to just be a slave. I want to be your friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know the Holy says that you're set apart, but your heart says you want me to come close. Mm. So how, do you, so how do you know that, David? I said, because God didn't plant one tree, he planted two in the garden. How, how do I know that God wants us not just to submit to his will, but have our own will? Because he planted two trees. Because he gave them a choice. Because it is one thing to be God and for you to follow my will. Mm. It is another thing to be your friend and for you to choose my will. Right. 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 Hallelujah. Oh. He didn't want to be separated. He wanted to walk in the cool of the garden like he did with Adam and let him to say, Adam, where are you? Because you're not where you typically are when we go on these walks because I want to walk with you, not just lead you. They can understood it. I may break the law, but I don't want to break your heart. Mm, hallelujah. And I know David was right in what he did because in Acts it says, the words of the prophet are in agreement with this. That after this, I will return and rebuild David's fallen temple. Not Moses' tabernacle, but David's fallen temple. It's ruins. I will rebuild and I will restore it. And the rest of mankind may seek the Lord, even all the Gentiles who bear my name, says the Lord, who does these things, things that have been known for long ago. What David didn't even realize that he was doing was setting up the temple for worship back then that we would follow now. David understood that while Moses had a temple, That while you're holy, that you still yearn for Hallelujah. me. Yes. That while you have given me a will, you, yes. you want my will to choose yes. your will. Yes. Amen. Jesus said, if this cup can pass, let it pass, but nevertheless, not my will, but yes. yours, because yes. which means not only Amen. did God have a will, but Jesus had a will. Yes. Why? Yes, he did. Which means God, I only have to, I, not only do I have to honor you, as God, yes. I have to honor you as friend. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Which means even when I don't want to, yes. because we're friends, Hallelujah. I know what I'm on earth Hallelujah. to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God isn't looking for people that just want to follow him. He's looking mm. for friends that want to have a relationship. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. And I understand that this is a difficult, a difficult word. Because mm -hmm. in order for you to, 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 to know what you want, you got to know who you are. Hallelujah. And knowing who you are affects who's in your circle. Yes. But sometimes that circle is not cut deep enough. Mm -hmm. And because we don't want to be cut, because we mistake the pain to be punishment and not proving. We think God clearly doesn't want to be my friend because how can you be my friend and cut me the way that you do? Amen. How could you Amen. be my friend and see me bearing fruit and cut me as soon as you see that fruit? 
is because God needs you to understand the goal was never the fruit. The goal was for you to be fruitful. Hallelujah. The goal was never about what you produce. The goal is about what you perceive because friendship is an elevation. Friendship is revelation. Amen. And when God has revealed who he is to you, when the world wants you to challenge, to challenge you and say, clearly, it's easier and it's better being a friend of the world. It's easier yes. coming on this side. Because we can, we can give you what you want without the cross. We can give you what you want without the sun. We can give you what you want and you can still have fun. We can give you what you want and you can go do whatever you want. We, God is saying, I created you in such a way for you to have a will. Yes. But I wanted you to be friend enough yes. to choose my will. Hallelujah. And if you can do that, then we can be friends with benefits. God, I thank you. I pray right now that it has landed on fertile soil. I pray for this series because it is not easy having to do inventory of those who have, have been in life with us. But I pray that even as I speak that you would give your people wisdom and vision to not only see who they are, but see who they have connected to them and reveal to them where they need to make changes based on the future that you have in store for them. Because we know your word says that eye has not seen and ear has not heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men. But you have in store for those who love you and call you friend. We thank you for today. Pray that you would honor your word and this is all for you. Pray that you are pleased with what was offered. And I expect you to honor this word and move in the lives of your people in ways that they have not seen before. In Jesus' name, amen. As you stand to your feet, the doors of the church are open.